Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for September 29th, 2021. In this podcast, I get to teach the word of God on a daily basis, and I love it. It's a privilege, it's an honor to do so. I'm teaching a series entitled God is faithful. I want you to know that our God is faithful. He is faithful to you. I don't know if you know this. Maybe you're new here and you don't know this, but God made plans for you from the foundations of the world. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are unique and you are special. You don't ever have to be jealous of anyone else. When you're jealous of other people, you are devaluing yourself and you're disrespecting God, right? I mean, no, no, you got to know that you are who you are. You are called to be who you called to be. Nobody else has your assignment. You are, you are unique and God is faithful. God is dedicated to you. He made plans for you from the foundations of the world and he will never give up on you. He will never turn his back on you. He will never relax the grip that he has on you. He loves you with an unconditional love. I want you to open up your heart to this, to the love of God. Open up your heart and fully embrace it this morning. I'm going to be teaching on faith and I want you to know before I teach on how you are faithful to God, I want you to know that God is faithful to you. All right, so I'm teaching a series inside of the God is Faithful series entitled, We Can Withstand and Overcome Anything. This is part 12 of that series. And the title of today's message is Faith Versus Sight. I, I, I actually kind of leaned in on this a little bit yesterday, Faith Versus Sight, and then I'm going to pull the string on it a little bit more today. The, the, so we've been looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, a bunch of verses. Let's get through these, and then we'll get into the meat of the message, faith versus sight. Beginning at verse 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, from the Passion Translation, the Bible says, now it's because of God's mercy that we have been entrusted with the privilege of this new covenant ministry, and we will not quit or faint with weariness. We are like common clay jars, verse 7, that carry around the glorious treasure. We are God carriers. We are walking around with God on the inside of us. <laughs> Glory to God. We take God into every meeting every conversation, all the activity, we take God into Zoom calls, right? We are carrying around the, this glorious treasure so that the immeasurable power that is seen through us will be seen as God's and not ours. Though we experience, though, every kind of pressure, we are not crushed. Now, at times, we don't even know what to do, but we know this, quitting is not an option. We are persecuted by others, but God has not forsaken us. We may be knocked down, but we're not knocked out. We continually share in the death of Jesus in our own bodies so that the resurrection life of Jesus would be revealed through our own humanity. Now, we consider living to mean that we're being constantly handed over to death for Jesus' sake so that the life of Jesus can be seen through our humanity. So then, death is at work in us, but it's releasing life in you. Now, we have the same spirit of faith. This is where we're at, verse 13, that was described in the scriptures when it said, first, I believed, then I spoke in faith. So we also believe, then we speak in faith. Let me, let me just say, I really taught that yesterday. So if you haven't watched yesterday's message, go back to that because I dealt with first I believe, then I speak in faith, right? I really pulled the string on that. All right, verse 16. So no wonder we don't give up. For even though our outward man is gradually wearing out, our inner man is being renewed every single day. We view our slight and short-lived troubles in the light of eternity. We view difficulties as the substance that is producing for us an eternal weight of glory that is far beyond all comparison because we do not focus our attention on the scene, we focus our attention on the unseen. We spend time looking at things that we cannot see with these natural eyes. We are focusing our attention on the unseen. What is seen is temporary and what is unseen is eternal, right? So verse 13 is where I was yesterday. Verse 13 is where I still am today, but today the Lord led me to Mark 11. When I get up in the morning, and this is all fresh. Today's word is always like today's word. And so when I got up this morning, I was like, okay, Lord, I know where I'm at. I'm in verse 13. How, you know, how do you want to go? You want me to move on from 13? You want to keep laboring there? I think I'm going to be in verse 13 for a while. And the Lord took me to Mark 11. And this is what I heard as I was about to brush my teeth. Have faith in God. Oh my God. Mark eleven twenty three. 23, man, I love this passage. And so I, I got excited. I couldn't wait to get my cup of coffee, come down to my office. I love Mark 11. So let me tell you what happened in Mark 11. So in Mark 11, Jesus was leaving Bethany. I don't know if you know this, but Jesus, let's say Jerusalem is here, right? I'm, I try to be visual. Jerusalem was down here and Capernaum was up here. And, uh, um, and so 
Jesus set up his ministry headquarters up here in Capernaum, but he went to Jerusalem a lot. And so they would, him and his disciples would travel from uh, from uh, Capernaum headquarters down to Jerusalem. And whenever they went down to Jerusalem, he stayed at Mary, Martha, and Lazarus's house, right? Because it was about two miles away from the city of Jerusalem. And so they stayed at their house. This must have been a big house, by the way, because there's a, you know, Jesus was rolling, you know, 12 deep. And so Jesus and his disciples are there. They go down and they stay at Mary, Martha, and Lazarus's house. And Jesus gets up this particular morning. And remember, Jesus got his orders from headquarters every day. Jesus said, I only say those things I hear my father say. I only do those things I see my father do. And so the son can do nothing without the father. Jesus was led of the Holy Spirit in all things. And so Jesus gets up this morning and he sees the orders from headquarters. He sees that today I'm going to kick the money changers out. This is the day that he cleared out the temple, that he kicked out the money changers. So Jesus was fired up this morning. He was like, let's go, guys. And they left without eating breakfast. Mary and Martha was like, wait a minute, I made you breakfast. You left without eating. So they leave without eating breakfast. And so they're walking and Jesus, whoom, he's walking and he hasn't had breakfast and he's focused. He's about to kick some jokers out of, of the temple and he's walking and he sees a fig tree uh, far off. Yeah, yeah, Monique, this is this is uh, the Rick Pina version. I'm sorry. Yeah, there's like the King James, there's the, the Passion Translation, then there's the RPV, right? So RPV is what I give you all the time. So this is the Rick Pina version. And so, so they're walking and he sees this fig tree afar off. And so he goes, oh, snap, I'm hungry. And so he, go, he goes up to the fig tree, but the fig tree didn't have any figs on it, right? And so this is a, there's a whole nother level of revelation on this with this fig tree tied to, to Israel and all that, but I'm not going to go there. So anyway, bottom line is he sees this. And when he stood there, remember, Jesus only said those things he, he heard the father say. He only did those things he saw the father do. So as he's standing there in front of the fig tree, he sees in the spirit, the fig tree dried up from the roots, right? But with his eyes, he's seeing the fig tree having leaves on it. Right. So now his body is giving him input leaves. His spirit is giving him input dried up dead. So now he has to say something. He doesn't have to, but he's going to say something. Now, now remember yesterday, you got to believe, then speak. You got to believe, then speak. Living by faith is saying what you believe from, you know, saying words of faith from a believing heart. Right. So Jesus looked at the tree and said, no man will ever eat fruit from you again. And he said it out loud. It, the, the Bible says that the disciples heard it. They didn't, it, it doesn't say they overheard it. No, he said it loud enough for them to hear it because he knew that, hey, I'm, I'm going to use this later. He said it out loud. No man. I'm, I'm, so think about how crazy this is. This is why people that live by faith, people think sometimes you're a little bit, you know, off, right? He spoke to a tree. He stood there. They was there, 12 deep. He says, no man shall eat fruit from you for hereafter forevermore, right? And the Bible says the disciples heard it. Now, why did Jesus say that? Well, he said it, number one, because the father revealed it to him, right? Jesus saw the fig tree dried up in his heart. Number two, Jesus believed it. Remember, you got to believe it first before you say it. So he believed it, even though he, you know, he was getting input from his body that contradicted the input that he was getting from his spirit. He said it anyway, right? And then number three, Jesus said out loud, what he believed. Jesus said out loud what he believed. He said it out loud. Now, I've done this many times. I know it, seem, it seems crazy. It seems crazy. I, I'm not going to give you, uh, maybe I'll give you some, some of my own examples where I've, I have spoken to stuff, like stuff, stuff, inanimate objects. I, no, I need you to work. I command you to work in the name of Jesus. I walk away, get some coffee, come back, and I was working. I'm saying like, you know, I've done this. If I'm led to do it, I, you know, I know it sounds crazy, believe me, but this is not crazy. We're, we're living a different way. We're, we're living off of a different reality. So Jesus said it. Now, here's another thing. Yeah, you got to say it out loud, Myra. Here's another thing that happened. He said it, and then it, as soon as he said it, guess what happened? Nothing. Nothing happened in the natural, right, per se. So, so watch this. He said it. He saw in his heart the fig tree dried up. He said out loud, no man is going to eat from you again. He knew what he was, he knew what he was saying, but the fig tree didn't dry up immediately. But it didn't matter. Jesus walked away like it was already done. Oh my God. Oh, I'm, I'm going somewhere. This is like a faith refresher. I love teaching on faith. He walked away like it was already done. The next morning, right? Boom, they're back in, 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 
in uh, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus' house, the next morning, they get up and they're going back to Jerusalem. Guess what? They take the same route. And as they're going, they walk by the same tree. And I love Peter. Peter was always talking out of turn, right? And Peter, Peter was like, master. Like if it was today, the, the, best, the Bible says, it says, master, look. But if it was today, he would have been like, master. If he was from Brooklyn, he would have been like, master, oh, snap. You know, I say that all the time. Master, oh, snap. Look, you spoke to this fig tree yesterday and now it's dead. It's dried up from the roots. And this is where we get the lesson. Then Jesus took this as an opportunity to teach them about faith. Then Jesus said to them, I'm going to read this to you from the New Living Translation and then also from the King James Version. So from the New Living, the Bible says, then Jesus said to his disciples, have faith in God. Now, one of the one of the translations says, have the God kind of faith. He said, have faith in God. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. But going back to yesterday's message, you must first really believe that it's going to happen and have no doubt in your heart. Then I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you received it, it will be yours. The King James says, so Jesus answered and said unto them, have faith in God for assuredly, I say unto you, whoever says to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, does not doubt in his heart, but he believes those things that he says will be done. He will have whatsoever he says. Therefore, I say unto you. Whatever things you ask for when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them, right? So this is have faith in God. I'm telling you, I'm not going to I'm not going to finish this today. I'm going to definitely have to be dealing with this tomorrow. It might be a few days, right? So so I have two things to share with you in this morning, just two. What does this mean for you today? I just have two things to share with you in this morning and uh and I'm laying the foundation for what we're going to be dealing with for the next few days. You ready? This is where now I can start teaching rid your heart and your mind of all distractions. Two things. Number one, here we go. We are called to walk and live by faith and not by sight. I told you yesterday that the opposite of faith is not doubt. The opposite of faith is sight. So let me explain. Second Corinthians five and seven says we walk by faith and not by sight. So you and I, you are, look at me, you are a tripartite being. I don't know if you know what that means, but basically God is a tripartite being. God is, there's three aspects of God. So God is father, son, spirit. You are spirit, soul, body. So there's three parts of you, just like there's three parts of God. So the real you is a spirit. So you are a spirit and the real you, which is a spirit is going to live forever in one or two places. <laughs> All right. So the real you is a spirit. Now the real you, which is a spirit possesses a soul. A soul is your mind, your emotions, and your will, your thinker, your feeler, your, your chooser, and your spirit and your soul live in a physical body for right now. So right now you live in this body, but one day you get a glorified body, right? So if you are born again, the moment that you're born again, your, your spirit, boom, was made new. The only part of you that was made new when you got born again was your spirit. Your mind was not made new. You got to learn that through the word. Your emotions were not made new. If you wanted to slap somebody before you got saved, then you got saved. You see them the next day, you might still want to slap them. You know what I'm saying? No, no. So, so your spirit was the only thing that was recreated. So the moment you got born again, God's spirit connected to your spirit and gave you a recreated spirit. So now you're born again. So you have a recreated spirit. So now you have, watch this, your soul is the control center of your life. The, your soul is where you make decisions. So now you're in your body. Your soul is getting input from your body and the spirit, your recreated spirit. So your recreated spirit is getting input from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is your spirit to spirit connection to the Father. And so the, the Father is revealing things to you through the Holy Spirit, recreated spirit down into my soul, right? Right. But at the same time, my soul is getting input from my five physical senses, from my body. So my, my, my body is communicating with this world, the seen, through my five physical senses. Remember the text says seen, unseen. How? Yeah, okay. So the unseen is what the Holy Spirit is saying. The seen is what my five physical senses are saying. And then my soul has to decide. I'm trying to make this as plain as I could. Jesus stood in front of the fig tree. His body was saying, hey, that's a fig tree. It has leaves on it. It looks good to me. All of that. His spirit was saying, it's dead. His body was saying, looks good. His spirit was saying, it's dead. So now you in your soul, you have to decide which one you're going to believe, which one you're going to believe, and then which one you're going to speak, and then which one you're going to act upon. Jesus decided to speak what his spirit was saying, not what his eyes were saying. 
And so Jesus said, no man shall eat fruit from you hereafter forevermore. He spoke nine words, cursed the fig tree, and then he walked away like it was already done. To live by faith, you have to be able to say what God is saying to you in the spirit, even when what your body is saying to you is a different, you, you might be reading an email, reading a report, or you might have physical pain, but, but the spirit is saying one thing and your body is yelling at you saying something else. Doctors may have given you all these reports. You're looking at stuff over here. Your body is giving you input. The Holy Spirit is giving you input. Whose report are you going to believe? You then have to make a decision in your soul, which one you're going to believe. And so whatever one you believe, then you got to open your mouth and say it. And you're going to say what you believe. So to live by faith, you must say what God is revealing to you. Watch this. At the risk of looking foolish, even when it seems crazy. Jesus stood out there and, and talked to a tree. No man shall eat fruit from you, you know, hereafter forevermore. They was like, what is wrong with this dude? This dude is talking to trees now? I mean, that's what we're doing? We talking to trees now? Yes. Why? Because that's what he was led to do. So and he walked away like it was already done. He just walked away like it, like it was already done. He didn't wait for the tree to dry up. He was like, well, wait a minute. Is it going to work? Is it going to work? Is it going to work? In Jesus' name. Is it going to work? No. He was like, it's already done. I, I already saw it in the spirit. I already said it. I believed it in my heart. I said it. I know it's already done. See, faith and sight are opposites. So either, look at me, either you are going to live by sight and, and be like a mere human, wouldn't it be a shame for you to be born again and never use the Holy Ghost? Wouldn't it be a shame for you to be born again and then live the same way that you lived before you got born again? That's crazy. So, so you could be born again and live like a mere human, or you could be born again and live like you're from above. And so the Holy Spirit is revealing things to you. The text that we read is seen over unseen. So the unseen realm is giving me input. The seen realm is giving me input. I have to decide in my soul Whose report am I going to believe and which one I'm going to receive? So the opposite of faith is not doubt. The opposite of faith is natural sight. So you have to decide either you're supernatural or you're not. And if you're born again, you actually are supernatural, but you may not be living that way. You can actually be born again and live like a mere human. Please don't do that. All right. Number two, you're going to have what you say. Say that. Say, say I am a whosoever. And I will have whatsoever I say. My God, you, you're going to have what you say. So in the text, Jesus taught us that if we speak what God is revealing to us, believe in what we say without a single doubt in our heart. Like we got to say it without a doubt. We have to believe first and then say it. Then we're going to have what we say. Paul told us <clears throat> in yesterday's message, I dealt with that. I believe, therefore have I spoken. So we got to believe it first. Then we say it and we're going to have whatsoever we say. Jesus heard a word from God. He spoke the word from the father, even though it seemed crazy. And he was so convinced that he walked away like it was already done. And this is the type of confidence that we got to walk in. This is, this is the life of faith. This is how God calls us to live. When God leads you to say something, watch this. When God leads you to say something that is beyond human ability, beyond natural laws, beyond the rules of this world. Look at me, doggone it. God is inviting you into the supernatural. When God leads you to say something that sounds crazy, it's because he wants to do something that seems crazy in your life. This is how you see the invisible. This is how you experience the impossible. This is how the supernatural becomes natural. If God is leading you to say something that sounds crazy, you should get excited and you should say it, but you got to believe it before you say it. Because if you say it and you don't believe it, then you're not going to have it. But if you say it and you believe it without a a doubt and you have no doubt in your heart, you're going to have whatsoever you say because you're saying what God said. You're not saying something you came up with on your own. You're only saying what God said. See, it takes faith to see the invisible, the unseen realm. It takes faith to say it. You're saying the unseen over the seen and you're not moved by the scene. I'm going to say what God said until I see what God said and I'm not going to allow what I see to change what I say and because I'm not living by the seen. I'm living by the unseen my natural senses are telling me one thing. The Holy Ghost is telling me something else. I live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Part of what sets the impossible in motion is you opening your mouth and saying something. One of the things that, that uh, a principle that I've learned in scripture, look at me, this is very important and I'm gonna keep flowing in this vein tomorrow. 
in the kingdom of God, nothing happens until you announce it. <laughs> Let me say that again. In the kingdom of God, nothing happens until you announce it. You need to open up your mouth and announce it. Say it out loud. Say it. Take God public. It's one thing for you to, mm, <laughs> to have it like, mm, yeah, have it on the inside and never say it because you, oh, what if it, no, 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 no. It takes, it takes courage to open up your mouth and say it. Nothing is going to happen until you announce it. You need to announce it. You need to open up your mouth and say Say what God is saying so you can see what God is saying in your life. You are going to have what you say. Like the situation with the fig tree, maybe you say it and nothing happens right away. Okay, fine. It may take days. It may take weeks. It may take months. It may take years. But if God said it and God put it in your heart and you said it and you believed it and now you're saying what God told you to say and you're lining up your lips, your lips with heaven and you are declaring what God has decreed over your life, I'm telling you, it's only a matter of time before you have what you say. Now, it may not happen right away. The fig tree didn't dry up right away, but it's only a matter of time. You are going to have what you, if God said it, it, it then God is going to manifest it. If God declared it, he will make it good. Say amen to that. I've given you enough for this morning. I feel like I'm giving you like a faith refresher. And believe me, I'm going to be flowing in this vein tomorrow. So lift up your voice and say this. Say, Father, <laughs> this is a season of leveling up for me. I level up by speaking words of faith from a believing heart. I take you at your word. Glory to God. I know you watch over your word to perform it in my life. No matter how crazy or supernatural it seems. I am a believer and not a doubter. I walk by faith and not by sight. I live by every word you reveal to me. And as you give me words to believe, as you reveal things to me about my future, I open up my heart to them, no matter how impossible they seem, I believe it, and then I muster up the courage to say it. I speak out loud what you say to me at the risk of looking foolish without a doubt in my heart. And I'm going to have what I say because I'm saying what you said. This is how I know greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith. Glory to God in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to today. Don't you want my notes? Get my notes for free. Go to todaysword.org. There's a big red subscribe button. Click on it. You get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. Man, I'm telling you, this is faith teaching, faith and grace and all of that. This is a message you might need to le listen to again. Get this down in your heart. Do me a favor. Two things. Go into the chat right now and please uh, share this message on your social media, on your timeline and with your friends. And then also second, second thing, share it. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, leave me some comments in the chat and then share the message. So listen, I'm going to come back tomorrow. I'm going to keep flowing in the same vein. I'm excited about this message. I believe this message uh, is going to be a blessing to a lot of people today. And as I continue to flow in this vein, it's going to be a blessing to a lot of people. So do me a favor. Um, get ready for the word. Meditate on this word. Like get this down in your heart. We walk by faith and not by sight. I love you. God loves you more. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.